Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to the house of our risen Lord and Savior, the second Sunday of Easter, as we continue celebrating our Savior's resurrection from the dead, the peace, the joy, the victory over our sins and death that we, we have through faith in Him. We'll follow the order printed out for you inside your service folder. In a moment, we begin with uh, two verses from the great uh, well-known Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Uh, and one special element uh, to our worship this morning after the announcement of forgiveness, uh, we will praise the risen Lord with an Easter Te Deum Laudamus, which means that I will speak the words of this very majestic and ancient hymn of praise in the church, and you then will respond by singing verses of, of Easter hymn. So, uh, may the risen Christ to be present and may he be glorified as we now give him our worship and our praise. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. 
Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again in his great mercy. God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. So hear the word of Christ who is called servant. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you are God. We praise you. We acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. Worthy of all worship. And the Holy Spirit 
disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by word and sacrament and banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And we turn to God's Word. The scripture readings for the second Sunday of Easter. Our first lesson this morning from Acts chapter 18. As the risen Lord came to the Apostle Paul in a dream and assured him of his abiding presence, which gave Paul courage as he proclaimed the gospel. St. Luke writes, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them. 
Because he had the same occupation, he stayed and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he led a discussion in the synagogue, trying to persuade both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul was entirely devoted to preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when they opposed Paul and slandered him, he shook out his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. He left that place and went to the home, the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue leader, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, when they heard, believed and were baptized. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid, but keep on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you and no one will lay a hand on you to harm you because I have many people in the city. He stayed there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And these are the words of our Lord. We go right to our second lesson for this morning uh, from 1 John chapter 1 as John proclaimed to his readers and to us the eternal life Jesus, our, our risen Savior. So John writes, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have observed and our hands have touched regarding the word of life, the life appeared, and we have seen it. We testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We are proclaiming what we have seen and heard also to you so that you may have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We write these things to you so that our joy may be complete. And this also the gospel of our Lord. Uh, the gospel acclamation is John 20, verse 29. Note that you, the assembly, will sing the refrain each time, and I will sing the, the tone of the gospel acclamation. rise for the gospel lesson that it, it comes this morning from John chapter 20 as the risen Lord comes to his disciples and brings them peace. St. John writes, on the evening of that first day of the week the disciples were together behind locked doors because of their fear of the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. Whenever you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. But Thomas, one of the twelve, the one called the twin, 
was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. After eight days, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Take your hand and put it into my side. Do not continue to doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus, in the presence of his disciples, did many other miraculous signs that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name and this is the gospel of our risen lord may we turn to your seats in a moment uh, we'll sing the hymn of the day uh, which has been called the easter story in song and do note that uh, the melody is is not maybe the one that we're used to uh, in the red hymnal but all the same we will enjoy singing the hymn of the day. Uh, I would at this time invite up to the front the younger children who are here. We got a special message for them. Boys and girls, do you know what this is? What does this look like? It looks like a big key, like an old-fashioned key, and it's got little hooks on it. Do you know what those are for? Oliver, you're right. Yeah, this is in my office at, at Key to Life, our child care center, right by the door. And I'm supposed to, you know, hang my, my keys on there, so I, I always know where my keys are. And... I have lots of keys, and your parents have lots of keys, too. What, what do we do with keys? Why are they important to have? Uh, we unlock, yeah. And you, you, can, you, know, you can start an engine on a car, but you're right. Um, you, 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 Micah, you can, you can lock a door, right, so someone can't get in. You can also unlock a door, right, to open it. So keys are really, really important. You know that... They're sort of like, like a, a key to heaven. There kind of is, and, and it's, it's not a real key like this, but the, the key to heaven, we call it the gospel. And that, that word means good news. So the, the good news that, that Jesus has washed away all of our sins, that is a, a, like a key that, that opens the door. And when someone believes that good news, like heaven is wide open to them. But, you know, some people don't believe that good news. And they want to maybe cling on and hang on to their sins instead of turning away from their sins. And, and then, because they don't believe the gospel, it's like a key and it locks the door, right? I'm going to talk more about this this morning in my sermon and how the Lord has like he's given us this key and, and he he wants us to to proclaim to people who are who are sorry for their sins that that the door to heaven has been unlocked and it's open to them so we'll talk more about that in the sermon but maybe the next time the next time you you see your parents using their keys to open a door or or to turn on the car you can remember how the good news about Jesus it's like a key and then we always believe that good news and then the door to heaven is always open for us 
Thanks for listening so well. Let's fold our hands and we pray, Jesus, we, we thank you for keys that you give to our parents so they can, can open and close doors. But above all, Jesus, we thank you for the good news of your love. Help all of us, help these children always to believe that good news because then the door to eternal life, for your sake, Jesus, is open for us. In, in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You may go back to your families.
grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our, our living Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow, fellow redeemed a number of years ago, there was a really bad earthquake that hit a small country in Central America and thousands of people, they lost their lives. And in the aftermath, a father raced to his son's school, hoping, you know, for a miracle to find him alive. And when he arrived, the school was as flat as a pancake. And all he could remember was the promise he had made to his son. You see, this was their uh, routine. Every morning, the father would drop uh, his son off for school, and they would embrace, you know, they would have a hug, and the father would, would kiss his son on the cheek and say, Son, I love you, and I promise I will always be here for you. And that's all they could think about, the promise he had made to his son. But then I remember that his son's classroom was way in the back, the far right side of the building. So we ran back there, you know, just hoping and praying that maybe some way, somehow we could find his son. And when he got there, he, he began, uh, as best as he was able, to start pulling away the pieces of broken concrete and, and the building materials. And, and this, this went on for hours. I mean, four hours, eight hours, 12 hours. And, and there were other parents there who, who were sobbing. And, and they, they, they told him, forget it. I mean, it, it's too late. Our children are gone. But, but he wouldn't stop this, this father. And it became, you know, like 16 hours and 24 hours and, and 30 hours. And, and there were policemen and firemen who were begging for him to stop. And he would only, you know, pause every few hours to drink a little bit of water. And then it was 36 hours. It, it got to 38 hours. And he heard the voice of a child. And he said, Armand, is that you? And, and the answer was, yes, it's me. And, and Armand wasn't alone. About a dozen of his classmates had miraculously survived, you know, the collapse of the building. And they had, they had huddled together in a little pocket, you know, underneath the rubble. And, and when they finally came out, Armand said to his father, Daddy, I promised my friends, that you would save me. And I promised them when, when you would save me, you would save them, because you promised, Daddy, that, that you would always be there for, for, for me. And Daddy, you kept your promise. And, and that's a, a real story. And, and for Armand and the other children, thankfully, Right, the story had a, a happy ending. But, but where am I going with this? As we, we turn our attention right now for a few minutes to the first part of the gospel lesson for today, we need to remember a promise that Jesus had made to the disciples about 72 hours beforehand. In that upper room, he said to them, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And our Savior Jesus is certainly someone who, who keeps his word and fulfills promises that he makes. You see, the risen Lord, he, he still comes to his people and he brings them peace. You know, peace that, that, that he secured and, and, and peace that, that he obtained at a great cost, a tremendous price. And in this piece, he wants his followers to pass it along. That the risen Lord comes and he brings us peace. First part of our gospel lesson, of course, would, would take us back to that, that very first Easter Sunday, right? It's the, the evening and you know, we can't say for sure, but the 12, you know, minus Judas, were quite likely in the same room they had been in 
few nights earlier on Monday, Thursday. And, and John tells us that the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. You see, the leaders of the Jewish people had made quite the impression on the disciples, and, and, and they, they saw how it seemed they were successful in eliminating Jesus, and the disciples you know, did not have to be rocket scientists to figure out that their names were probably on a list, and there would be nothing that the leaders of the Jews would love more than to silence all of Jesus' followers. So we can imagine all the fear and anxiety that, that filled their hearts. You know, they, they, they probably reasoned, we are walking dead men. Any day, the hammer is going to fall. But I don't think that was the only emotion welling up in their hearts. Can, can you imagine how much shame and, and guilt must have been in their hearts as well? I mean, they had a few days to think about how they abandoned their Lord, you know, when the garden, when, when the temple guards arrested him, and, and when their Lord, I mean, he really needed their support and encouragement, and just as fast as their legs would carry them, they, they took off. And then, and then on Good Friday, as Jesus is, is dying, right? And it seems that, that, that none of the disciples, with the exception of John, had, had the courage to show up and be with their Lord. Instead, they left him to die pretty much all by himself. And who do you suppose was probably feeling the most amount of guilt and shame? It would have to be Peter. Peter, who was so cocky and, and, and promised, Lord, even if I have to die, there's no way I will ever deny you. And then, I mean, he just, he just fell flat, right? As three times he denied having any connection whatsoever with Jesus. And so there they are with, with fear and, and guilt, right, in their hearts. And, and then, you know, John writes that, that Jesus just came and, and stood among them. So I was, you know, thinking about that this week. It reminded me, I show my age here just a little bit when I was a boy, one of my favorite programs on television. Remember the old Star Trek with, uh, was it William Shatner as Captain Kirk and Leonard Nimoy as, as Spock? And I remember the times when, you know, Captain Kirk is on some planet and he gets out that, that funky walkie-talkie and like, hey, Scotty, beam me up. And then you get this funny music plays and these glittering lights. And then the next thing you know, Captain Kirk is on, you know, the Enterprise starship. And it, it, you know, it's like that happened here. Jesus just appeared, and it wasn't that Scotty was beaming him up. But remember that Jesus is now in the state of exaltation. And, you know, he has all his powers that he is using. And so, like magic, he just appeared in their midst. And he had something to say, didn't he? And we maybe would have suspected Jesus to have scolded the disciples, you know, and read, read them the riot act, you know, you knuckleheads. I mean, what, what happened the other night? And how could you leave me to die all by, by myself? But, but Jesus, right, in the state of exaltation, I mean, he, he could look in their hearts and he saw, you know, the, the, the guilt and the shame and how their tails were between their legs. And the last thing the men needed to hear was the message of the law. And so Jesus came with the message of the gospel. He, he, he said, peace be with you. In the Aramaic, it would have sounded like this, Shalom Lecha. That's what he said, Shalom Lecha. And, and you know, back then, it's true that, that Shalom Lecha was very much a, a normal and a casual greeting, right? People use this all the time, Shalom Lecha. I suppose the equivalent, you know, in our day and age, you know, might be, hey, how's it going, right? We often say that to people, hey, what's up, how you doing? Well, 
Coming from the lips of Jesus, this was way more than a, hey, what's up? I mean, these were real words of, of peace and forgiveness. Shalom lika. Peter, James, John, Matthew, all of you, it's really okay. I've washed you clean. The Father's not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. Shalom lika. Peace. We're reconciled together. And, and, and then John tells us that after he said this, right, shalom laka, that, that then he, he showed them his hands and his side. And I think it's interesting, in, in the state of exaltation, Jesus could have removed, right, the, the, the marks from his hands and side, but, but he chose to retain them. And I, 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 I believe strongly that when we get to heaven, when, when we see our Lord, that we're going to see these scars on his hand and his side. And, and, of course, these scars are not scars of shame. They're scars of victory, right? And remember what the prophet Isaiah wrote by by his wounds, we are healed. I mean, the peace, the forgiveness that Jesus was bringing to his disciples, the peace, the forgiveness that he brings to us. I mean, it's true that it's free. It doesn't cost us everything. But this peace and this forgiveness isn't cheap. Look at the scars. Right? Jesus paid a great price to bring his disciples peace and, and healing and forgiveness for their sins. And after he said this and showed them his hands, John writes, the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. But again, John writes, Jesus said, peace be with you. A second time, shalom laka. And we wonder, why, why would Jesus have to say it again, right? Were, were some of the disciples hard of hearing? Did they need some Q-tips, right, to clean out those ears a little bit? Well, I, I think there's another reason why Jesus repeated it. Isn't this true of us as, as, of us as human beings? You know how often we are haunted by the sins of our past? and the skeletons that we all have in our closets, and how, how our sinful hearts, and certainly Satan wants us to doubt if really the Lord can forgive us. And so Jesus, he has no problem saying again to them, to you and me, shalom laka, peace be with you. And then he added, he said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Does that surprise you a bit, that Jesus would say that? You know, we, we might expect that Jesus would forgive them, after all, right? His death paid for the sins of the world, but we, we might suspect that, that because of their actions and the way they were unfaithful to the Lord, that they had disqualified themselves from ever serving again in public ministry, but that wasn't the case at all. Though they were broken and flawed, yet Jesus had plans for them. As the Father has sent me, I am now sending you. And then John says he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, the disciples already had the Holy Spirit, right? He had come to them. He, he brought them to faith and gave them knowledge that Jesus was the eternal Son of God, the promised Messiah. You know, the Bible says when, when someone believes in Jesus, our bodies become his very temples. He, he dwells in us uh, miraculously. And, and yet now Jesus was giving them an extra measure of the Holy Spirit. He was giving them power and energy, and they would receive even more of the Holy Spirit in 50 days on that first Christian Pentecost. 
but they were being energized and empowered. And then Jesus said this. He said, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. As we'll confess from the catechism, this is a special power and right which Christ gives to his church on earth to forgive the sins of penitent sinners, but to refuse forgiveness to the impenitent as long as they do not repent. What, what a gift the Lord gives to his followers. And, and let's be clear here. It's not like we are forgiving people. God has forgiven people. And, and we have the special privilege of announcing this forgiveness. And, and for those who believe it, we, we comfort them who maybe are afflicted by their sins with the assurance that the door to heaven is open. It's also not we ourselves who are not forgiving other people, but those who reject the message of the gospel well, God doesn't forgive them. And then it's our responsibility to warn them that until they repent, the door to heaven is locked. But a special power and right which Christ gives to his followers, right? To, to pass this peace along. You know, I showed the kids that, that little uh, key hook thing which I have in my office at Key to Life. Also have one of those at home. My wife picked one up a few years ago at a garage sale. Kind of a joke in our family. I'm always losing my keys and so it's sitting right by the back door when you come in the garage. But you can probably guess what I often forget to do is to put my keys you know, on that, that little ring. So kind of a personal struggle that I have. Please pray for me with that. But, you know, the Lord has given us these keys. Boy, may we not lose them because the Lord wants us to use these keys. And we do. I mean, you all realize that we use the keys this morning. Most of our services uh, begin with what we call confession and absolution. And I would really encourage you to look at confession absolution as the highest point of the service. And say what you mean and mean what you say. And, and as you confess your sins to the Lord who can look into your heart, then look at your pastors or your vicar, your deacon, as men who represent Christ. And we tell you what Christ wants you to hear. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ has come again. God made you alive in Christ even when you were dead in your sins. Use the keys. What a great thing when in our homes... Yeah, in our homes, right? We, we, we use the keys, you know, when, 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 when spouse sins against spouse. When, when brother sins against his sister, right? When, when, when parent or child, you know, sins against parent. Or what about when, when parent sins against child? That, that can happen too. I remember years ago when we were in Florida, I had one of those days, you know, just a bad day to be a pastor. And then just went home at night frustrated, discouraged, and there were four things that I wanted, right? The couch, television, remote control, and a can of Coors Light. And, and you know, I remember the twins, you know, they were like five years old, like, Daddy, 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 right? Can we do, you know, you promised, you know? And, and you know, this was not my finest moment, but I just like in a volcano, I erupted on them to leave me alone, and boy, the damage was done, right? Just tears, you know, filled up their eyes, and I forget which one it was, Alyssa or Sierra, you know, she's like, Daddy, you know, because I said, I'm really sorry, right? I was, I was a bad father, and, and she said, Daddy, it's okay. We forgive you, Right? And that's just passing this peace along. And we are to do this, right? 
As the Father has sent me, so, so I am sending you. Think about that. Isn't that amazing? You, you and I, as guilty as the disciples of abandoning the Lord, of, of being unfaithful to him, of failing to confess him, right? You, you know that, that you and I are just like Peter, right? We, we struggle to be consistent in our Christian living. The good I should do, I don't. The evil I shouldn't do, I, I keep on doing. And yet, in the waters of baptism, the Lord calls us to faith, and he says to us, as the Father sent me, I am now sending you. And, and though we're broken, and though we're all flawed, and yet we have this very rare treasure, what we call the gospel. And, and what a privilege to pass this along to people in our lives. And you know, sometimes we can pass this along by, by simply inviting. You know, I was looking in the bulletin, and we have a baptism seminar the next Saturday. And, you know, if you have friends and neighbors and coworkers who have children who have not been baptized, my experience and my ministry, the number one reason that many parents don't have their kids baptized, they don't have a pastor who will do that for them. And you can tell them that your pastors at St. Peter do baptism for free. As the Father has sent me, I, I'm sending you. And a member of our church uh, talked to me earlier this week. Uh, very recently, her friend's mother, uh, she was in her 50s, she died after a long struggle with cancer. And this member uh, came to me to talk about her father, about the same age, and, and this you know, made her think about him. And, you know, years ago, he belonged to a church and he was completely turned off to church uh, because of his experience as a child. And she said to me, Pastor, you know, what's going to happen when, when he dies? And I said, that's a great conversation you should have with your dad. And, and talk to your dad about his relationship with Jesus. And dad, our are you walking with him by faith? Are you ready? You know, and I like to invite to the Bible information class, right? And to invite friends and neighbors and co-workers, you know, just come and learn about the Savior who loves you and, 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 and have a relationship with him and even maybe to offer, if this helps, I'll come to the classes with you. And I might benefit from a refresher, huh? The Father has sent me, I'm sending you. You know, two weeks from yesterday, we're privileged here at St. Peter to host uh, the spring rally for the Wisconsin River Valley Circuit of Lutheran Women's Missionary Society. And some of you know I'm very privileged to serve on a church body's board for home missions. And our biggest partner uh, is without a doubt the LWMS organization. And I'm sure many of you maybe have never come to one of these rallies before. Even men, you can come to this. And these missionaries that we send, I mean, they, they, they go in our name and on our behalf, right? The Lord is sending them and, you know, learn what we can do to support them in their work. All right, let's wrap it up. Way back in 1864, was it Henry Longfellow? He wrote that well-known Christmas um, carol, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Right? And there's that one phrase in that carol. Uh, it, it goes like this, there is no peace on earth, I said. And we could understand why he would write that. 1864, the Civil War is raging in America. There is no peace on earth, I said. You know, it can be easy maybe to feel that way today. We, we look in our country, in our world, the hatred, the conflict, the division. And yet... Our Lord always keeps his word. And he promised his disciples the night before he died, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. The risen Lord still comes to his disciples with peace. Peace 
obtained at a great price, thousand, thousand, thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto the peace that his followers are so privileged to pass along. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, let's confess our faith with these words from the small catechism. What is the use of the keys? Where is this written? The Holy Evangelist John writes in chapter 20, Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Then return to your seats. The ushers will come forward. If you brought an offering to worship the Lord, they'll be gathered at this time. Please rise for our prayer. God of all grace, we thank you for the gift of eternal life in your Son. But we do not see Jesus with our physical eyes. Help us see him with the eyes of faith. Through your Holy Spirit, breathe on your church that it may faithfully proclaim the gospel of our risen Savior with courage and diligence in all lands and to all people. Preserve us from all assaults on our souls and deliver us from doubt and despair. Prevent us from being led astray by worldly wisdom and false teaching. As we go from this holy place today, Grant peace and rest to us all. We pray this in the name of Christ, our risen Lord, as we also join together and pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because Jesus' tomb is empty, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the risen Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated for the closing verses. in the back part of your service folder, so please uh, read them over carefully. One that uh, did not make it into the service folder, uh, Thursday evening, uh, Scott Hebner, who uh, directs uh, athletics in our school and teaches upper grades, did receive a call to Kenosha Lutheran Academy to be the assistant principal and upper grades teacher. So let's keep Mr. Hebner and Elaine, uh, his wife, in, in our prayers as he considers this call. I'm going to welcome Eric Najelik. This is the first uh, Sunday of the month, and we often get an update from our leaders, and Eric serves on the family ministry board. So thank you, Eric. Uh, yep. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Hi, my name is Eric Nagelik, and I serve on the Family Ministry Board with Jason Hofstetter, John Linloff, and we are advised by Pastor Schnacki. I'd like to take a few minutes here to uh, tell you what we do and what we've been up to lately. First off, we try to keep tabs on what's going on at Northland Lutheran High School. Probably the biggest news, which continues to be impressive, is how the total debt has gone down from what once was $3.5 million to just over a million currently. They are really striving, striving to get that down below $1 million by June 30th, so please think about donating to this great achievement. They also have the Together We Shine update, which will be held April 21st. There will be a soup cook-off and a silent auction. Please consider signing up to be a part of it, and if you're not in, good at making soups, please consider attending and trying all these wonderful soups. There will also be an open forum for anyone interested at 6 o'clock, April 16th, followed by the Northland Delegate Meeting. Here you can definitely get caught up on all the exciting things happening at Northland. Lastly on Northland, but not really a Northland event, uh, we have our final youth night of the school year coming up April 28th. This is, is an event that we do three times a year through the school year, and it's meant to get teens 
together from our surrounding communities for fun and fellowship. It just happens to be mostly at Northland. The last event was at Marathon Bowling Center. Um, please spread the word for local teens, grades 8 through 12, or grades 8th grade through 12th grade. They do not need to be a member of St. Peter. We encourage new faces for sure. Other things we've been up to is we just had our Easter for Kids event, which had approximately 30 to 40 kids, which was great to see so many kids learn about the true meaning of Easter. Last Sunday, we had our Easter breakfast services between, between services, which was a fundraiser to help teens at our church get to the youth rally in Colorado this summer. Thank you for all who attended and supported our youth here at St. Peter. We currently have about 11 St. Peter teens and six chaperones heading down there and an additional 30 or so people from other local churches joining us on the bus. <clears throat> we also currently have our beef jerky fundraiser, and I think there's some in the back um, here in the narthex if you're interested in that. Um, another fundraiser we have coming up in early May is our baked goods bingo and bake sale. Um, stay tuned for more info on that as well. Lastly, our Sunday jam and teen classes continue to run a few weeks yet this year, and we are grateful to all the volunteers who make this happen. We are always looking for more interested volunteers though, so if you have any interest, please talk to me and I can get you set up with a role you might be comfortable with. That's about all I have for you for today. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be in the back. Um, feel free to ask me and thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you, Eric, and we appreciate everything the Family Ministry Board does. Um, now, uh, as you leave this morning, uh, maybe you saw in the bulletin, we've decided to experiment in the month of April, so the ushers are not going to come forward, you know, and row by row usher you out, but you're all welcome to leave on your own, but uh, we encourage you before you take off just to greet those around you and maybe uh, look at someone you've never met before, consider going up to them and introducing yourself. Uh, what we're hoping to accomplish is when we have visitors and guests here, that none of them ever leave on a Sunday morning and go away as if they felt unwelcomed or unnoticed. I promise if they leave that way, we will never see them again. And then we can't share with them the message of God's love. So we're going to try this. Uh, for the month of April, and then we'll probably try to find a way to get some feedback uh, in May and determine if we want to keep doing it this way or, or you know, go back to the old way. So uh, I do need to go up to Wausau to preach at that service, so uh, I, I greet all of you uh, from here. Um, have a great day in the Lord, and um, now take a moment to greet one another. Have a great week.